What's up guys, Matt from FootballBoots.co.uk and today we're going to be doing our latest custom concept. We're going to be taking Adidas's recent released and striking Red Limit pack to create arguably the best looking Hyphen and Phantom 2 into a very classic and traditional looking Predator. So we're going to combine the two together and see what happens. So let's get straight into the step-by-step -step process and the first quick point to mention is that the Nike Hypervenom boots we're using are a fake pair as we didn't want to ruin a real pair and actually the other boot to a Halloween glow in the dark custom project. So what's the first step to begin our customization? Well creating such a dramatic transformation we needed to have a clear plan so we sketched out our ideas of which parts of the boot would be certain colours to emulate the red limit pack. Having our plan nailed down, the next step was to take the laces out, ready for us to change the green colorway into a red limit look, using a combination of spray paint, permanent markers, and metallic nail varnish. So we've taken the laces out, but what now? Well, the parts of the boot being spray painted were the dynamic fit collar and most of the upper. So the Hypervenom zigzag graphics and Nike swooshes has to be covered in cut to size tape. This is without doubt the most time consuming part of the custom job, but essential. The best way to cover the necessary areas is to use small pieces of tape and overlap each piece to create a sharp finish rather than use bigger pieces quickly. We started by taping up the zigzag graphics which wrapped the side panels and heel. The large areas were quick and easy but the smaller sections required a level of precision. Just remember, the more care taken results in a sharper finish. Completing the zigzag graphic, we now moved on to the two Nike swooshes which required a slightly different technique. Instead of taping neatly within the swoosh, we layered tape on top ready to be drawn around and cut out to shape. This is a good time to mention how creating a custom concept like these red limit hypes are definitely meant for the mantelpiece rather than the pitch, as the spray paint and added effects would diminish quickly. So once you've drawn around each swoosh, peel away the tape, carefully cut around the edge and then position back into place on the boot. Don't worry if it's not perfect as the original logo won't be visible once complete. But here's how the custom looks after completing the preparation stage. Into the transformation stage and here's where we start to use the spray paint. First of all we gave the boot an overall black coating using a non-metallic spray paint. The technique we used was evenly applying the spray paint from toe to heel, making sure the boot was directly side on so no spray would seep under the tape. Once we had rotated the boot to cover all of the upper, we moved on to the knitted collar which is without doubt the hardest part of any boot to make black. The spray paint did the first step for us by creating a darkened colour ready for a black fabric dye treatment. Before moving on to the sole plate, make sure every little section is covered and then progress to coating the outsole using the same technique as before. Mm. So here's a look at the custom boots after completing the first spray paint stage. Back in the office, here's where we applied the fabric dye onto the collar and this was going to need two applications. For the first application, we used a thinner solution of fabric dye to soak into the knitting material. Whilst it doesn't look like it worked that well, the first layer actually allows for a second layer to sit on top and create a full blacked out look which we'll see during the second application. So here's where you can see how the second coating of fabric dye sits on top. The only negative of using this product is that it makes the collar slightly stiffer, but it really is the only way to transform the colour from green into black. We gave the boot a quick dry with a hair dryer and then headed back outside for the second stage of spray paint. So we've managed to create a full blackout, but here's where the Red Limit Custom was really going to take off. The type of spray paint we used was the closest match to Adidas's red we could find and it turned out to be pretty much a perfect match. One of the nicest features of the Red Limit pack was the gradient colour effects, so we decided to create that on the upper and sole plate to match the X16 Plus Pure Chaos. Yeah. The idea was to heavily apply the red spray paint to the toe box and then only spray the side panels and collar which worked really well. Yeah. Happy with how the upper looked in its two-tone form, we moved on to the sole plate and did exactly the same by coating the front portions and keeping the back solid black. Yeah. 
Moving back into the office, here's how the boot looks all dried up and it's fair to say we were definitely on the right tracks. But what was going to happen when we peeled back the tape? Being as delicate as possible because the spray paint is known to crack, we removed the tape from the swooshes and you can now see how we were going to create our own by using a product which we never had coming up next. Doing the same to the zigzag graphics and here's how the boot looks once all the tape had been taken off. So now it was time for the nail varnish stage which we had no idea how it would work. What we wanted to do with the metallic silver nail varnish was to fill in the green shattered effects within the zigzag graphic. A delicate touch at this point is definitely needed. Gently dabbing the brush onto each section was the best technique. So we did this for all parts necessary which took a seriously long time, especially at the smaller pieces. After filling in each shattered piece, we then moved on to the thin green line which bordered the entire area and the hypervenom text. Although it looked slightly sloppy at this point, we had a trick up our sleeve to make the boot look incredibly sharp. So here's how the zigzag detailing looked with its new metallic silver nail varnish treatment, but let's make the finish a little bit crisper. Using a black permanent marker with a medium fine point, we neatly drew around each shattered effect which resulted in a much better looking design. This really saved the custom concept for us. Ticked off the zigzag transformation, it was now time to fill in the back Nike swoosh using the same metallic silver nail varnish and technique. The overall clean finish wasn't overly necessary as we went around it once finished in a black border due to the heel cup already being black. With the large front swoosh looking slick in black, all we did was fill it in with a black permanent marker as some of the red spray paint had seeped under the tape. So at this stage we were close to the finish line, but how can we cap off such a dramatic transformation? How about matching the metallic silver zigzag graphics and Nike swooshes with reflective laces taken from the Space Dust Messy 16.1s? Being careful not to crack the paint when putting the laces through, here's the final look of our very own Red Limit Hypervenoms and also how they compare to Adidas's Pure Control and Pure Chaos boots. Vote in the poll card now for your favourite model out of the three on screen. So there it is guys, what a mega custom that was, but what should be our next concept? Let us know in the comment section below and your idea could be our next inspiration. Thanks for watching. Cheers.